All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you uh, different style connectors, how to deep in them, and uh, how to repair them. So starting over here, we've got uh, some Toyota connectors, some Chrysler connectors, non-serviceable connectors, airbag harness connectors, aftermarket harness connectors, repair kits, and tools. So starting with tools, we've got uh, the main tool that you're going to use is a deep pinning tool like this. It's just a needle, basically. Um, now I sharpened the edge of this thing. You can see the tip of it. And that's just to help get in underneath the retaining tab of a connector. Um, I've got this style here. It's like a Deutsch connector style. And I'm going to show you uh, the difference between regular pins and Deutsch pins. They're a little bit different. Um, other things that you may want to get one of these for removing tape and uh, harness insulation off of wiring harness. You don't have to buy the snap on one. They do sell them at like an arts and crafts store or Walmart. Uh, I forget the name of them, but uh, that's what it's used for. And then um, small flathead screwdrivers, picks, and also I use these seal removal tools. Actually, they work super well for unhooking connectors that are hooked to uh, sensors or other connectors. So I'll show you quickly how that works, but, um, uh, and maybe some small needle nose pliers. Those are some of the things that you're going to need. Uh, the last thing I guess is silicone spray. This stuff comes in super handy for, uh, getting into connectors and it makes them uh, sort of slippery. So they unlatch very nice and, uh, they go together very nice because you get a lot of uh, weather packed rubber that's inside of a connector and it'll bunch up and bind when you're trying to put the connector together. So spray some of this stuff on it and it'll do you wonders. I'm telling you, if you don't use this stuff, go buy it, use it because it's totally worth it. Um, I'm just going to go over right now uh, the two different main styles of pins and connectors. Uh, so this is a Deutsch style pin and basically it's just a tube with two uh, tangs that stick off to the side and you can see when it goes into the connector those tangs open up and it can't come back out. So that's where this uh, one tool comes in handy where you would slide it over the connector or over the pin sorry and uh, undo it would push those tangs down and allow you to pull the pin out of the connector. Um, the other main style that I mostly see which is in um, mostly domestic vehicles and uh, imports like uh, Honda and Toyota, stuff like that, is uh, basically in the connector, there is a uh, retaining tab and you have to go in with that needle style depending tool and push down or yeah, pull down on that retaining tab and that's gonna let you pull the pin out. So. This, uh, this one here is mostly used for European cars and uh, also trucks is what I noticed they're in a lot of, like uh, semi-trucks and heavy-duty stuff. Um, I'm just going to show you guys a quick overview of sort of a connector, what's inside of a connector. Um, to start off, we have just the main connector body, which is that black piece right there. And get this focused in there. Yeah, so this is our connector body. You can see the side we're looking at now is where the wiring goes into. There's also this tab right here that pushes down. That locks the connector to the sensor or another connector. And then this is the face of the connector where your pins would be sticking out of uh, male or female pins. And normally there is a lock this is a primary lock that goes in place of in here. So I'm going to stick that in there and show you what that's supposed to look like real quick. It only goes in one way. It does not want to cooperate. There, like that. This primary lock needs to come out in order to gain access to the retaining tabs to let the pins out. So if you're trying to deep in a connector, this is the first thing that you go to. Um, I'll tell you now, the very first thing that you want to do once you get your connector part uh, like off and ready to be deep pinned is to study it. 
There may be one primary lock, there might be a primary and a secondary lock. It really depends on the connector. They vary between manufacturers. They're all different shapes and sizes and uh, they come apart, some of them come apart differently. Um, so as you can see, this one has a primary lock in the front and so does this one. This one has a lot more uh, pin locations. This one here, uh, it's similar to this one, except uh, it's red. And also this backing needs to come off to gain access to the wires. So once again, a little bit different. Um, this is a Toyota harness connector. And you can see that square block right there. That needs to be lifted up in order to gain access to those retaining tabs. The retaining tabs will not lift unless you have the primary lock out of the way. Just keep that in mind. Some harness connectors are weather packed. They have rubber in them and they are always located outside of the vehicle just to keep moisture out of them so that they do not corrode and give you wiring issues. Um, a lot of interior harnesses are not weather packed. So keep that in mind if you, uh, you're trying to rebuild a connector that's outside of the vehicle, make sure you put the rubber on the wire, like this one. See the, the green there? Those are rubber pack, uh, weather packs, and they just slip onto the wire, and normally they get crimped on. Uh, the terminal will go on and crimp around it, keeps it from moving around, but that keeps all the moisture out of the connector so that um, you do not get moisture in the connector and ruin the terminals. Um, Moving on, we've got uh, non-serviceable connectors. They basically just have a bunch of silicone or epoxy that's filled into the connector, and you can't fix these. There's no way to get into them without destroying them, so if they go bad, you just cut them off, order another one, and replace it. Airbag harness connector. Um, I do not fix airbag harness connectors personally uh, for liability issues and safety reasons. You can see the inside of this one has gold pins. Every airbag system I've ever worked on has gold-coated terminals, 18 karat gold, I believe. And there's also some silver tabs down at the bottom that you can see. And those are there so that when you open up the connector and unplug it, those terminals pop up and short out your two wiring terminals together. And they do that so that um, you don't accidentally set off an airbag with a uh, static shock at all, okay? Like I say, I don't rebuild these. I think that there's a manufacturer that outlines a repair procedure, um, but I'm not 100% sure. So I just stay away from uh, repairing them and I replace only. Um, aftermarket harnesses. I've noticed a lot of aftermarket harnesses do not have a primary lock on them. You can just go right in the front, lift up the retaining tab, and pull your pins out. And uh, I'll show you. Here's uh, there's your tab. It's down here. Okay. So you just get down there with your needle pick, and you can lift it up just like that. You can see it moving. So that's how you would do that. You would grab a hold of your wire from the other side that you want to remove. You would push the wire forward slightly as much as it'll go. And what that does is it releases the tension off of the retaining tab and allows you to lift the retaining tab up with your tool, which then after that you would pull the wire out. So that's basically how you would do it. I'm gonna do one in front of you so that you can see exactly how it goes. And um, I'll give you some tips along the way. So I'm gonna start with this one. Uh, you can see just studying this connector here, you got a big red primary lock sitting right in front of you. So that's going to have to come up. So my tool of choice, I'm going to use this 90 degree pick. And uh, at this point, I would probably spray some silicone inside of the connector. And that's going to help get some lube inside of there and keep any tension of the plastic um, off of it so that uh, the thing comes apart nice. So you can see just by working it, it wants to come up. You 
want to take your time, have patience. You need to have patience when it comes to these things. If you get rammy with it, you'll mark the plastic up. Normally internal connectors like this, um, I may not spray silicone on them, but if it was something on the outside that's full of dirt, yeah, give it a rinse with some silicone, shoot some air into it, get the thing clean. Um, but yeah, you need to get this primary lock up. And some of them are a real pain. Like, they just don't want to unlatch. I've already had this one apart like 10 times, so it's already a little marked up. But, yeah, you get the idea. If, um, if you get too rammy with it and break it like that, guess what? Think the connector's gonna go back together nice? No, it's gonna get stuck. Maybe it doesn't go back together all the way. Maybe it doesn't latch. Maybe the pins don't contact properly because it got all broken. So, like I say, this is just a junk connector. I've already had it apart a bunch of times, so not too worried. Uh, another thing that you could probably use is a flathead screwdriver just to try to get in there and uh, lift it up. Yeah, that one's really stuck on there. Well, that was a great example. Maybe we'll try another one of these. Let's do uh, this one. Okay, assessing the connector, I can see there's a spot down in there where I can put my pick. I'm gonna try to just use leverage and pry this up. Maybe. primary lockout fairly well we didn't damage it which is good and now we can gain access to those retaining tabs so remember what I said uh, now in this case you would want to cut this tape back so that you can grab hold of the single wire that you want and then you would find which wire you want right you're gonna take the edge of your pick the sharp side and lay it down on top of this pin and slide down the back side of it and you'll be able to feel where that retaining tab sits you can get a light in there too and take a good look but uh, then you'll be able to release release the uh, retaining tab and you should be able to pull the wire out Just like that okay you can do your repair the times that you would want to do this is if you had uh, damaged wiring that's right at the connector and you need to change the wire deep in it if you have a damaged wire that's pretty close but you could still do a repair but you need to get the connector out of the way to gain that bit of uh, extra wire to get in there to do the repair deep in it as long as the weather pack is still tight around the wire. You know, you can have heat shrink go right up to it and it'll be fine. You can stick it back together. As long as it's sealed and you can get your repair done, you know, do it. But uh, there you go, I thought I'd just show you. Um, that's how you would do it. If you have any questions, throw them down in the comments below. Let me know if you have any uh, crazy stories on uh, connectors that have been pinned wrong or um, if you've ever had to do like a 95 pin connector let me know how that went for you I'll tell you I had a uh, I had a vehicle one time and it had a weird issue and what happened was somehow at the factory these pins 
It was normally supposed to be installed in the connector like this. Somehow it was installed in the connector uh, this way. And just that slight offset of where this spring piece is uh, caused a terminal tension issue. You wouldn't think it would, but it did. So it had an intermittent electrical fault in it. And it was in a big connector like this too. So it was funny just looking at it. You could see one was backwards and that's what it was. So thanks for watching the video. If you got any comments, like I say, throw them down in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.